Learn to keep going when other people stop. 75 years after he first dropped into France, he's proved that again today. Well, earlier we saw Boudicca, a cruise ship carrying about 250 veterans, set sail from Portsmouth Harbour. The ship has been chartered by the Royal British Legion and is being followed by a flotilla of Royal Naval vessels. Earlier I was joined in the studio by Admiral Lord West, the former First Sea Lord and Chief of the Naval Staff, to take us through those pictures and he gave us his thoughts on what it would have been like for the men who served on that day. Well, I mean, at the, at the higher level, there was real worry that actually it might not succeed. You know, we'd had the Dieppe raid in, uh, in 1942, which had been a disaster, really, although we learnt many lessons. We're just seeing the <coughs> Prime Minister and her husband, <coughs> Philip, and Defence Secretary Penny Morden waving at the Boudicca as it goes past Queen Elizabeth. And, uh, and, and, and so there was a real concern that this could be a failure. I mean, Eisenhower and Montgomery, and they all wrote out uh, a, 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 a report assuming there'd been a failure. That's how worried they were. When you go lower down in the ranks, uh, I think at, 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 at a sort of operational command mm -hmm. level, people are concerned how it will go. When you get to junior officers and NCOs, really what you're concerned about is, will I perform properly? Will I do my duty? Will I look after my men? And the men themselves feel, will I, will I fight? Because people generally fight for the chap who's alongside them. And if you haven't fought before, that's a, a, a real worry. And, uh, you know, I know from having been involved in fighting, you, 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 you have real, you know, butterflies in your stomach, you're well, concerned. Fear is a natural human worried about what's going to happen. slightly worried if people weren't fighting. Ab absolutely. You know, and am I going to perform, yeah. you know, will I do my duty and perform properly? And these are all worries people have. As I say, I think so many of them were seasick. They actually, <laughs> you know, they, they were obviously scared as well. But when they got out, they, at least they weren't seasick. Um, but, you know, you've got this unknown ahead of you. You don't know what's going to happen when you step off those landing craft. I'm always struck when I hear <coughs> veterans, I remember talking, hearing the First World War veterans now all pass, but a similarly veterans Second World War saying there's a terrible mix of emotions when you go to events like this. Obviously huge pride, mm. humbleness as well, um, slight embarrassment that everyone's paying attention to you in this way because no, very few people seek this out. But also a sense, a, a kind of residual sense of guilt that you've had the life of the 70 years. Absolutely. And the people you remember who never had that opportunity. That, and that is absolutely true. I mean, last week was the, the 37th anniversary all in Portsmouth, yes. you know, because we were important as well. Sure. And um, as you say, pool and Dartmouth. And all these and other, all all these other places, places yeah. were, were full as well. But someone had to be somewhere, and there's a D-Day museum in Portsmouth, and it, you know, it, it is the sort of home of the Navy in a sense. And um, so it made sense to do that. And just a final thought on, on <clears> the importance of D-Day and why we should still be commemorating it. Well, I think it did actually mark 2021, but expected it. People in Virginia have been expecting to come along, but now it's happened, it's, it's a bit of a shock. 